Great. Hello, everybody. Hi. Are you having a good time? Yes. yes. Good. Um, I'm just completely amazed by the people who have come before me, especially Amelia. And I know if you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can sing. But I can definitely tell you that I cannot dance like that at this moment in my life. So I wish I could. Maybe it'll come soon. But <laughs> So there's been a lot of talk about the authentic self tonight. And that's something I'd like to share with you as well. For me, the authentic self is who you are when you're a child. So if everybody can think back to when they were five, six years old, you really have that genuine innocence. You have the person that you were before you became the person that you are today. And that person was somebody that was very unaffected by the culture around them. They were honest. They maybe complained too much when they didn't get enough peanut butter or chocolate. Um, they were picky. They were friendly. They were just very true to themselves. And I think a lot of us can say that we are not that person today. And many of you would probably give a lot to have that honesty back. I feel like I found that for myself, and I'll share with you my journey and how I got there. So when I was eight years old, I went to my third grade class, and we learned about the solar system. And for some reason, my only takeaway that day was that the sun was a star, and that stars supernova, and that our Earth was a little too close to the sun, and it wouldn't make it through that supernova. It was pretty much gone. And in my mind, I didn't think, oh, a billion years, we'll be fine. I thought, no, that's coming in about two days. I'm gone. We're fried. Interstellar barbecue, we're just gone. So you can imagine how that would make you feel as a little innocent child or somewhat innocent. And I stayed up that entire night crying to my parents, saying, I don't want to die. I'm not ready. I can't die right now. And they said, what are you talking about? You're way too young for that. That's ridiculous. Well, fast forward about, uh, let's see, I was 20. So what is that, 12 years in the future? I was a theater major. My math is not so good. <laughs> and I am the typical college student. I go to the parties, I eat the Taco Bell, the whole box of Oreos, the whole nine yards. And I got about four hours of sleep a night. You know, that's healthy, right? That's what most people get. And one day, I decided to make a radical change and go to the gym. Now, I was not an unhealthy person, but the gym had been out of my life for a few months, admittedly. And that morning, something was different. I thought, you know what? I need to get a little bit of a workout in. I was drinking a little too much coffee, staying up a little too late. Two days later, I woke up in the hospital. And, you know, so much for an effort to be healthy, right? <laughs> I had had a cardiac arrest at the Cal State Long Beach Recreation Center. And Fortunately, there had been a sports medicine student right next to me. Nobody else in the entire gym noticed that there had been anything wrong with me. I collapsed in the middle of the gym on the tile floor, and I went down on my knees. One girl, one girl noticed because she was not plugged in to the TVs, to her iPod, to her cell phone. She gave me CPR. The paramedics came, and soon I was taken to the hospital. And what I didn't know until afterwards was that I was shocked six times. And generally, if you have to be shocked six times, it, it's just not happening. They, they need to give up. Fortunately, my pulse came back. I was induced into a hypothermic coma. And during my sleep, so to speak, they tried to find out, the doctors tried to find out what had gone wrong. I had no medical history of any of this. I was genetically healthy. I took relatively good care of myself despite the past few months of my college life. <laughs> and it was still a mystery. 
I woke up surrounded by family and friends, still more tests. Nothing gave. Nothing showed any reason. Now, this is the part everyone loves to hear. It's a fairy tale, a uh, Nicholas Sparks, Fault in Our Stars sort of story. So for any hopeless romantics out there, you'll like this part. When I was in the hospital, a friend of a friend came to visit me. And I had never met him before, but he reached out to me having the same condition I had three years before. He wrote a letter, came to my hospital room, and our friendship started from there. He came back every day, helped me with my transition, helped me with my experience. So, what they decided to do was implant me with a defibrillator. And it's sort of like a pacemaker, but it shocks you like jumper cables on a car. So, this is about the size of a cell phone. It's right above your chest, and it goes in like so. There are wires in your heart, and after the surgery, you cannot lift your arm, or you'll rip them out, it hurts really bad, you get a lot of scar tissue, and you really don't want to do that, because then they have to pull it all out, and it's really not fun. Every 10 years, you get the battery replaced, and hopefully it doesn't have to do its job. But if the need arises, that's the situation I'm in today. I have a defibrillator, and if anything, if my heart goes past 220 beats per minute, then I will get a horse kick in the chest, as they like to tell me. So, what happens after this? I went home. I stayed with my family, and I said, okay, something's got to change. Something's changing in my life already without me doing anything. This was the universe telling me it's time. Something's wrong. And I had this sinking feeling. I was completely confused. I thought, I have my family. I have my life. Why do I feel so lost? And what I came to realize over the next year was that I had already been lost. I had lost that authentic self. I had lost that young girl. I had lost the person who I genuinely was. And I had stopped doing those things that made me feel alive. I spent a lot of time with this new friend of mine who had helped me with this new step in my life. And two weeks after my cardiac arrest, we climbed Angel's Landing in Zion, much to my parents' dismay, and stopped at every switchback to realize that my pulse was almost 200 beats per minute. So that was an interesting experience. I'm glad I did it. I haven't stopped since. I've been making sure that I don't let that fear of the 220 hold me back from any sort of adventures, so to speak. Over the last couple months, this year, 2014, I've learned a lot of things. I have found that authentic self again. I've found that little girl. I've gone back to those things that I've loved. I climb, I spend time in nature, I read, I sit down and I stop trying to change who I am and I remember who I was. When you separate out your thinking mind from your emotional self, you can really come to understand how much time you spend trying to change the reality of things. I stopped and said, how do I really feel about this? What's wrong? What is really wrong in the core of myself? Not what do I want to happen. How do I feel? And instead of trying to change how I feel with all the logic, with all of the possibilities, with no, I shouldn't be upset, and this is why. I let myself be upset. I let myself hurt. I let myself love, and I realized 
my heart was extremely broken, and I needed to allow it to heal, and the only way I could do that was to listen to it and not try and make excuses and change it. And through doing that, I did find my authentic self, and I allowed her to wake up again. And every day, she's coming back a little bit more. And when I look at pictures of the little girl me, in well, duck raincoat, all the little outfits your parents put you in, I don't feel guilty. I don't feel like I've abandoned that part of myself anymore like I used to so many times. I remember a couple of years ago, I wrote a poem about myself after I looked at a little picture that my parents took in Washington Square Park in North Beach. I was two years old. And in that poem, I was very sad, I was very regretful, because I felt like I had left her behind. I felt like I had forsaken my true self and I didn't identify with the little girl. And I do now. I do identify with her. And I'm more honest to myself. I'm more genuine to myself. And I hope that for everybody here today, that if you feel like you've lost a piece of yourself, that you can allow it to come back by listening to how you feel, and that you can be authentic and brighter. Thank you. <laughs>